Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Carolyn if you're new here. Today is March 10th, 2021 and I was reflecting because a year ago, almost today, a year ago on March 13th, 2020 was the day that I um, kind of packed up and had my dad pick me up and I moved home from school because of COVID. Um, my school had gone, my college had gone fully remote and um, there was just no reason to keep me locked up there in my apartment, really lonely, so that's the day that I moved home. Um, and it's kind of just crazy to think that it's been a year now. Um, in a way, this year has felt super long and stretched out. <laughs> and then in other ways, it feels really, really short, like I just came home. And I think that's just because there's not a lot of things to pick out from the year as real moments. Um, it kind of all blurs together. Um, and I could like go on and on and on about all the shitty things of the past year. I know that I've been like incredibly lucky for so many reasons. One that like I had a safe and loving home to come back to. Um, I know that a lot of people don't have that, but also that um, I haven't been affected um, directly by COVID in the ways that a lot of other people have had. I mean, it does obviously suck that I am like a college graduate and like the job market isn't looking good, but other than that, I've been incredibly lucky. Um, so I definitely want to recognize that. Um, so I was trying to think of all the positive things that have kind of come out of this year um, as I was reflecting that it's been, you know, almost a whole 365 days. Um, and one of kind of the main things has been reading and has been books and, and even booktube, watching booktube has been like kind of a real joy of the past year. Um, I had watched booktube for a long, long time, but the past year really getting back into reading um, has really been kind of like my saving grace this past year. It's been, like I said, a hobby, but it's also been something really comforting and really fun. And um, obviously the past year has been lonely for a lot of people, um, myself included, and reading has just really kind of always been there and been something to do and to fill my time. So I'm really grateful for that. Um, so when I was looking back on all the books that I read, mostly in 2020, but like in the past year, um, a lot of the books that kind of stand out to me is uh, just, even just like moments in time or just books that I absolutely loved. Um, a lot of those were really big, thick books, I think because they were just like very immersive. I was in them with the characters for a really long time. Um, and just to just kind of have like a little bit of escapism where you're like totally sucked into another world um, has been like incredible. And that was like some of my favorite reading experiences from last year. Um, and specifically I'm thinking of like the whole Wolf Hall trilogy, um, the Southern Reach trilogy, which like I've said probably a bunch of times have been like my favorites of 2020. Um, but all of the books of the Wolf Hall series, all of them are like big in their own right. They're all really long books, but especially The Mirror and the Light is I think almost 900 pages, the last book. Um, but I also read them back to back to back because I was so obsessed. So to kind of come out of that world and it's like so jarring that I had been reading them for like almost like two months probably all together. Um, and to kind of have to readjust to the world around me and I really miss that feeling. Um, and like since January began in 2020 I have read books that I've absolutely loved and some really like top tier books in my opinion but none of them have been like big thick chunky books and I feel like I'm really missing that feeling of kind of getting sucked into a world being with a character for a really extended period of time because um, I think that those are some of my favorite books. I think I'm realizing that that I really miss really long immersive reads and of course it does mean that I don't read as many books um, when I'm reading really long books, but it does mean that I think they might be like all-time favorites. Um, so that's kind of what this video is about. Obviously I'm like rambling and reflecting on the past year of everything that's happened and kind of how life has changed, but also like things that have brought me comfort and that's been reading. So kind of my mind jumped to getting back into some long books. Not all super long books. I will kind of, you know, intersperse them with other books. Um, but these are just like some of my um, longest books on my TBR, ones that I've kind of had my eyes on for a really long time. Um, I have narrowed down the list because there are like a good amount of really long books that I want to read, um, but these are kind of the, the ones that came to mind right away. Um, and I just wanted to like mention them and um, kind of get excited about reading them and hoping that this will actually make me reach for them next and pick them up next now that I'm talking about them. Um, so I'm just going to get started and I hope you enjoy. One of the first very long books that I want to read is The Goldfinch by Donna Tartt. Um, in January I read The Secret History. I'm very behind on that <laughs> bandwagon. I'm super delayed. I know that's been like a favorite of people's for like, you know, super, super long. Um, this is another of um, Donna Tartt's work. Um, and I'm not as interested in this, just based on the synopsis, but 
I absolutely loved her writing in A Secret History and I loved the characters and I loved the tension and I loved the whole the drama and the atmosphere. I loved all of that. Um, so I am super interested in this. Um, I'll just read a brief part of the synopsis because this is a big boy. Probably like, what is it, like 700 pages almost? Yeah. Yeah, like 700 pages. Um, so it says the goldfinch is about a boy, Theo Decker. Um, he's 13 years old. He's a New Yorker and he kind of survived this freak accident that kills his mother. It's very mysterious and he it involves a painting that will draw Theo into a criminal underworld, um, which sounds really interesting. Kind of this, like this dark network of, I don't know, some sort of criminal enterprise. Um, so it says, The Goldfinch is a novel of striking narrative, energy, and power. Um, has vivid characters, mesmerizing language, and suspense. Um, which is kind of all I could ever ask for, so I'm hoping that this is as much of a success as The Secret History was. Um, I'm not sure it will be just because that book was like top tier 5 out of 5, but I'm also very excited to read this. Hopefully I will get to it soon because I think she's an author that I will really like. Okay, and then I don't think anyone will be surprised when I mention Stephen King. Um, this is 112263. Um, it is about the assassination of JFK. Um, well, it's kind of, so that's kind of like the jumping off point, but I think it's somehow, it plays with time. Um, what if the assassination didn't happen? What would the world look like? Um, but again, this book is big. Um, obviously, Stephen King is known for many things, and he is not known for being brief. He is not concise. He is a man who can ramble. And I think um, in a lot of his other books that I've read, um, most of them I've enjoyed, but there definitely have been points that I'm just like, oh my god, like get to the next thing, or like this is just unnecessary detail. We don't need this. And I'm like, where is his editor? <laughs> um, but I am really excited to read this. This is like super highly rated. People absolutely love this book. And it's also one that I haven't seen talked about as much as some of like his classics, like The Shining or It. Um, so I am really excited to read this. Um, but I will mention that I do also want to read it, which is like obviously like an a thousand page book, one of King's um, like most renowned. Um, I am hesitant to read it. Um, obviously, I am aware of like the very uncomfortable and inappropriate orgy scene that happens with the children. Um, that was not in the movies. Um, I've seen both of the movies and really enjoyed them. I definitely enjoyed the first um, movie better more than the second, but still both really entertaining movies. I've seen it chapter one many many times. Um, so I am looking forward to reading it. Um, I definitely want to get to it, but for me, this is kind of the one that I want to get to next in terms of his really, really big ones. Um, so hopefully that will be soon. Okay, and then this one I am so excited about. It's been on my TBR for maybe the longest out of any of these. No, maybe that's dramatic, maybe not, but I think it has been. Um, and that is The Luminaries by Eleanor Catton. Um, I will just read you the blurb because... It is so incredible and I just will not be able to do it justice. So it says, It is 1866 and Walter Moody has come to stake his claim in the New Zealand gold rush. On a stormy night, he stumbles across a tense gathering of 12 local men who have met in secret to discuss a series of unexplained events. A wealthy man has vanished, a prostitute has tried to enter life, and an enormous cache of gold has been discovered in the home of a luckless drunk. Moody is drawn into this network of fates and fortunes that is complex and as exquisitely ornate as the night sky. Basically, this book has all of my buzzwords. Um, the synopsis sounds incredible. It is a really, really thick book, but um, this did, yeah, this did win the Booker Prize. Um, so it, obviously, it's also a very literary work, which I'm excited about to kind of have the atmosphere of mid 19th century and kind of all the mystery and the kind of shady um, characters, but also to have it be like a literary work. So I am very, very excited about this. I think out of all of these, this is kind of one I want to get to next. Um, and now I will mention some books that I don't have copies of yet, but that I hope to soon. Uh, and one of those is The Greenlanders by Jane Smiley. Um, this is one that I am super, super excited about. Um, sorry, I'm just pulling up the blurb on my computer. Um, Jane Smiley is a super renowned author. She's very, very popular, has a ton of books. Um, but I think of all of her works, The Greenlanders sticks out to me as one that I want to kind of get to first. Um, it is, it's um, set in like the 14th, 15th century. Um, it's kind of written in a saga form. 
um, in like an Icelandic saga form following a family for a really long period of time, kind of the ins and outs of their life. There are kind of moments that I've heard it's kind of slow, but it's really, really detailed. Um, and I kind of love that. I love a slow book. I don't need it to be like, sorry, that's my dog jumping. I don't need it to be like a super fast paced book for me to enjoy it. I kind of love following a family, following a cast of characters for a really long time, really getting to know them, kind of their, the monotony of their daily lives, but also kind of big moments. Sorry, my dog is. Um, this to me is like a historical fiction that I know I will enjoy. Um, and then the next book that I'm really, really excited about that is an absolute tome, it is huge, is A Brief History of Seven Killings by Marlon James. Um, this is another book that won the Man Booker Prize. Um, it's set in 1970 Jamaica and I think it has kind of like a starting out point of the assassination of Bob Marley, but I think it's so much bigger than just that one event. I think it kind of goes into the politics and the culture and um, really brings you into 1970s Jamaica. Um, I am super, super excited about it. It has been like highly praised, obviously, it won the Booker, um, um, so I'm really, really excited about that. Oh, and then one that I do have, which is not as big as the other ones, but I'm still counting it because it's over 500 pages. <laughs> Some of these are like a thousand pages, so this is like easy compared to those, but this is The Overstory by Richard Powers, and it is like a piece of nature writing, but it's also, you follow characters for a long period of time, like they're kind of, you're weaving in and out of their lives, but this is basically supposed to be really, really beautiful. It talks about activism and resistance, um, the natural world, um, what does it say? Concentric rings of interlocking fables that range from antebellum New York to the late 20th century timber wars of the Pacific Northeast and beyond. So it does say on the back that this book follows a handful of characters, a full cast of people, which I love, um, and I think they're all kind of connected in some way, but I'm really looking forward to this, to reading it um, kind of for spring, and it is like nature writing, like I said, so hopefully that is the right time to read it. Oh, and then I really want to read, I don't even know how you say it, I think it's just 1Q84, <laughs> is, that, is that right, by Haruki Murakami. Um, obviously this book is like top tier. Um, fiction writing. It has been like absolutely praised by so many people. Um, so let me kind of read the blurb because I know I will not do it justice if I just start blabbering on and on and on. So it kind of begins following a um, young woman when she gets into a taxi and all of a sudden she starts to kind of, I'm reading from my computer, um, notice, notice discrepancies in the world around her um, and she has somehow entered a parallel universe which she calls 1Q84. Um, book covers like a whole spectrum of the whole spectrum of fiction writing so it definitely it says it's a love story a mystery a fantasy a sci-fi a dystopia um, to rival George Orwell's 1984 so um, I couldn't ask for more that sounds incredible I know like obviously a lot of people have read this book I'm definitely slow and I am behind but I am super super excited again this book is like I think over a thousand pages so obviously I'll have to space it out but I'm very excited um, I usually am somebody who like absolutely just reads one book at a time. I am not somebody who like bounces around in between books. Like I am a mood reader in the sense that I don't set like a very strict TBR for each month, but I am not somebody who like if I start a book I won't just like kind of get out of the mood and pick up something else. I like need to finish whatever I start unless I absolutely put it down and it's just like like a DNF. Um, but I think for this next one that I'll mention if I do pick it up, I think I will have to take breaks and kind of read something else that's a little bit lighter in between. Um, otherwise, I just don't know how I'll get through it. And that is Duck's Newberry Report. Um, so again, this book is over a thousand pages long and it follows, it's kind of like a stream of consciousness novel that follows an Ohio housewife. Um, and basically, every single thing, every thought she has, the reader knows. Um, so it kind of talks about like police brutality, gun violence, American politics, but it also follows the woman and her thoughts about herself and her own family. Um, obviously it's like one very specific perspective of American life because she is fairly privileged um, as a character. Um, but I am very, very excited to read, it, read this book. Um, it has had very mixed reviews, so I'm not sure what I'm getting myself into. Um, but if you have read Dex Newberry Report and you think it's absolutely worth the read, please let me know to kind of encourage me to do it. Um, and if you've read it and you think like it was a waste of time for whatever reason, also let me know that because again, I do not own this book yet, so there's still time. <laughs> I'm not committed. Um, but I just think that to know a character that well and to kind of see every single thought that pops into her head I think it'd be really rewarding. I'm sure it would be like emotionally exhausting, physically exhausting, um, 
But I think when you finish a book like that, there's such a sense of like accomplishment and like, again, it's like you put it down and you have to like readjust, like this woman becomes so real in your mind and I really miss that feeling. Like obviously Thomas Cromwell was a real character and I re a real person in history um, and I really feel like I know him through Mantell's writing. Um, and like putting it down, I like miss him. I like think about that book, all those books all the time um, and I just want another experience like that. Um, so those are all of like the tomes, the really really lo long books on my TBR that I could like think of right away. Um, I do not have any timetable of when I will pick these books up. Um, I'm not giving myself any sort of challenge to read all of these in 2021 or whatever. Um, I know that these books are really really long. Some of them are like over a thousand pages and I want to enjoy them. Um, and like if I feel exhausted and I just need to take a break and read something else in between, I'm going to allow myself to do that. I think I'm discovering that I do really love long books. Um, I have read some incredible really really sl slim novels like The Deep by River Solomon or I just read I'm Thinking of Ending Things which I'll talk about in my March wrap up and those are books that I like absolutely love but I feel like I'm really missing feeling so deeply for a character and being with them for such a long time because I feel like nothing really compares for me, um, compares to that experience for me and I think that's how I kind of categorize a favorite in my mind. Um, so while I've like loved really short books I don't know if they can ever match the way I feel about a really really long book that I spend a lot of time reading. Um, so that is my goal with some of these books. Um, I hope I haven't rambled too much. I'm sorry, I'm sure I have. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please comment below the longest book on your TBR for if you've read any of these. Um, subscribe if you feel so inclined. I would love to have you. Thanks so much for watching. Bye everyone.